I'm just getting on a few minutes early and uh, giving people a chance to maybe find this page since I made a change this week. We uh, made a new page uh, called um, uh, Little Rock First Gospel Church dash Pastor Smith. And I did that so that I wouldn't be using my normal Facebook page um, so that people wouldn't have to look through all the conglomeration on my normal page. And that way that these Bible studies should be in chronological order or possibly I should say in reverse chronological order because the newest one would be on top and then the last one under that, and the one before that, and that, and so forth. And I thought it would probably be easier for people to be able to go to just this page for a Bible study, and maybe be able to go back and listen to anything that maybe they missed or wanted to restudy something um, that needed to be restudied. Um, while I'm waiting here, I'm going to uh, ask, I think, most people. Uh, I see Brother Ciprian is on. I'm a little bit early, Brother Ciprian. I'm waiting for people to get on with us and find this. There's Sister Janique, Sister Kayla. looks like people are starting to get on, so I guess it's working out. People are finding the page. I'm giving an answer in my text here. There we go. Uh, anyway, Sister Kayla, I hope you're feeling better. Uh, I know you were sick Sunday. We've been praying for you, so I hope you're doing all right. I did get your message about uh, the book that you're interested in, and I told Sister Gail I would get you that book. Or uh, We can probably have it mailed to us if... if uh, if I'm not going to be able to, to get down there to get it. So anyway, um, anyway, I just want to welcome everyone. God bless you. It's good to be back on our broadcast again. Again, I was just mentioning the reason for this page is so that people won't have to go through all of my personal, whatever goes on my personal page, page Facebook. I'm not too much of a Facebooker anyway, but, but anyway. Uh, I've got this page where we'll have the Bible studies and then in reverse chronological order, you should be able to go back and, and be able to listen to previous Bible studies without having to search through a, a whole lot. Uh, I want to do uh, maybe uh, say something tonight about <clears throat> the four kinds of prayer. There is, um, I've mentioned this, but I never have really went through it at Bible study at the church, I don't believe. Um, and the four different types of prayer. Uh, number one is contrition. Number two is supplication. Number three is thankfulness. And number four is adoration or praise. That's the four different categories of prayer that we uh, go to the Lord in, and I just thought I would say something about it tonight. Uh, first, I'll mention uh, the word contrition, you know, because um, the word contrite in the Bible means, it literally means in the Strong's definition is to crush like powder. Well, the word contrition, in other words, we are to go to God in a, a contrite spirit. There's that scripture in Psalms 34. Let's read it in the, the 14th verse of Psalms 34, where it says, Hi, Sister Mosseline, uh, 34 and um, 14. It says, Depart from evil and do good. 
Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears upon open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut, on, cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And of course, that means uh, the Lord, he will deliver you, but you've got to stay. You have to ma maintain a contriteness. You have to maintain contrition. Uh, that is having a brokenness of, a, of humility. I... I, I I mentioned that it is recognizing one's need for humility and lowliness in needing responsibility to a greater true authority. In other words, to realize that I'm just, I'm just a mere person, just a mere creature. I started out as a baby and I'm growing into this life and learning about this life. Um, I, you know, and developing and to have a contrite or a brokenness and a humility to recognize our need of the creator, our creator that we realize I was created. I was, I'm here for a purpose. God has a purpose. I'm here and I'm fortunate enough that I've heard about God, that I've learned about God, I've experienced God. I've, I have been born again of God. I realize my need. That's why I'm here serving him. That's why I'm seeking him. The scripture started out saying, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. What does that mean? Well, you have to come to a place where you realize, you know, that man, in this life, number one, I'd like to be at peace with God, my maker. I'd like to please him. I'd like to have his favor on my life. I'd like to know what his, his purpose is. I'd like to somehow fit into his purpose because I know that ultimately I was telling the Lord just yesterday I was sitting out in a chair in my yard and I was just meditating a little bit and I just said Lord I I just think that you are such an awesome creator I was just looking I said it was a beautiful day yesterday and I was just looking at the green grass and the trees and the birds. <laughs> I was thinking about, um, I got my mind on birds just a little bit. You know, I thought about the sparrow. I, I, uh, I've been meaning to get me a martin house, maybe a couple of them, one for the front yard and one for the back. Martins are beautiful birds and they eat mosquitoes and other insects that they'll, you know, rid your property of if you build, if you have a martin house. And I don't know how they know. I didn't have any martins at, on the farm in Missouri until one day I, I bought a martin house, put it up, and and uh, at first a bunch of sparrows, uh, birds went in it, made their home there. But when the martins found it, they took that house over. And uh, I'm I'm using my earbud here. Oops there. Uh, I hope y'all can hear me okay because I'm, I'm using that. Uh, I've been told that that gives a better volume for you all. Somebody let me know if you're hearing me okay. Anyway, hi Sister Kendrick. Um, so anyway, I'm just thinking about all the birds. Blue jays, orioles, cardinals, scissor tails, um, 
you know, all these robins, all these beautiful birds, little finches. And I'm just thinking about God and his, the greatness of his creation. Uh, it just put me in awe. Everything he created was alive. The, the plant the kingdom, the, you know, uh, water. Did you know water never stag, ne water itself never goes bad. Now you can put something in water that will cause water to be uh, diluted or even uh, poisonous. But water itself, if you just take water in a pure vessel, it'll never go bad. <laughs> so think about that. It's like the Spirit of God. There's nothing wrong with the Spirit of God. It'll never go bad on you. It gives life to everything. Everything has to have water. Everything has to have God's Spirit for life. And, uh, you know, the Bible said he, the, he moved on the face of the deep. And uh, so, uh, and, and creation was made. Well, <clears throat> to recognize our need for God, our, our humility, that, that, that's a humility to recognize you have a need for God himself. Um, let's read the 51st Psalm. Uh, just while we're right here. And what is it? The 17th verse says the sacrifices of God. Well, let's start in the, uh, the 16th verse. said, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a, a, and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, thou wilt not despise. See, God's not interested in some ritual. Uh, those pictures, those sacrifices in the Old Testament were pictures and they had a meaning, a great meaning for man to understand the sacrifice of what those sacrifices stood for. But what it boiled down to, the psalmist recognized and mentioned that it was for a broken spirit and a contrite heart, a crush, for man to humble himself enough to recognize his need. You see, God provided so much for us in, I mean, in his whole creation. I was telling him, uh, when I was talking to him yesterday, I said, you know, I've never even seen all the wonders of the world, but all what I have seen has certainly been a wonder of your creation. It's just so amazing. Sometimes we are so caught up in life we don't stop and recognize the greatness of our God and creator. Just looking at what he's done, looking at the stars, the heaven, the sky, the, the, <clears throat> the operation of the earth. You know, the earth turns so perfectly in orbit and it it's set up in in the seasons in its orbit around the sun and and then it's just amazing and if it they say if the earth just got off just a millisecond it would cause chaos in the universe but it don't get off because we've got a God in heaven that knew perfectly how to create all of this and make it work. And saints, it's going to it's gonna endure forever. That's what I told God. I said, I would like, you know, I'm getting to be an old man. I'm not feel ancient yet. I still feel like I have a lot of life in me if God will let me sustain. But I've lived long enough to know that I would certainly like to live long throughout eternity, ever, forever, and behold the goodness and the greatness of God because I've only had a smidgen, just a little taste of it. Life is so precious. It's so great. I've got a chicken in my chicken house. She's sick. 
She can't walk. She can't do nothing. I'm feeding her, giving her a little water every day. She's got such a will to live, and she's striving to, to, she's striving to overcome this inability, whatever it is that's overtaken her. I was thinking about how God put that in his creation. Life is so precious. It's so great. And we, we, you know, when something happens to us, we, 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 we endeavor with all our strength and might to maintain the preciousness of life. Anyway, let me get back. I'm just saying that one of our prayers needs to be in allowing God to know and pouring our soul and heart out to him that we recognize our need is just a mere creature. And, and knowing that we may have gained a lot of knowledge or a lot of understanding about certain things in life or even many things in life, but recognizing how much greater and how what we have is just a, a, just a small token of God's fullness and his greatness. And yet we have the opportunity and promise that if we'll seek him with our whole heart and serve him and, and, and maintain this humility of letting him work in us and recognize it. See, he don't want us to always speak small and some little, uh, you know, insignificant something or nothing. He wants us to grow and develop and become great men and women of God. And we will, if God permits it. If we stay humble enough, he will permit it. The Bible said he, he resists the proud, but he draws nigh to the humble. You want God to get close to you? Get humble. Recognize your need for him. Get small enough every day. Get small enough to recognize, I need God. I need to seek him. I need him in everything I do. I need His. Re I need to recognize him in every part of my life. And it needs to be significantly the main part of my life. So that's one of our prayers is going before God and maintaining that humility and that contrite spirit, that brokenness of even the, the more, what's that song says? The greater he grows. The more that I serve him, the greater he grows. Because the greater we realize, you know, that he's the answer to all of life situations. And he wants us to develop to become something great in him throughout, e e throughout eternity or everlasting life. Then the other, uh, the other uh, uh, category in prayer is supplication. You know, uh, wasn't it in, it was in the eighth chapter of Kings. If you'll turn with me there. Uh, this is when, uh, uh, huh? oh, uh, in the eighth chapter of, of Kings, and uh, let me see what verse here I want. The 28th verse, and by the way, this is this is when Solomon was dedicating the temple. The temple had been built. Solomon was was uh, building it, and he was he was dedicating it. Look what he says here in the 28th verse. Let me just read uh, a few verses here. I want to read 28 through 30 right now. It says, "Yet have thou respect." unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today, 
that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place uh, of which thou hast said my name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place, and hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when, thy, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. Uh, my wife's saying she's getting an echo back in the other room, but I think it's because it's we're in the same house. If anyone else is getting an echo, let me know. I may be too loud. Anyway, I said to King. Anyway, notice what he's saying here, that he's saying, God, when a person looks to this place where you've put your name, and what that, I know he was talking about the natural temple there, but what he was, what this really, what this really uh, in depth, the deep meaning of it is, is the church, the body of Jesus Christ, where God uh, has, there's no echo in these other people they're saying. Thank you. So this is where God is, is, uh, he, he's placed his name. It's in the body of Jesus Christ. The picture of it is the early church, the New Testament, the, the church in the New Testament you read about. That's what those people took on his name and no other name did they take on. And they, in other words, they served him, not a ritual, not a religious, a secular group or anything they begin to realize what true worship was. And those that prayed looking towards that group of people, that divine order of God that we read about in the New Testament, that the whole tabernacle and the temple worship pointed towards, which it was a picture of uh, uh, and, sim and, and symbolic of the, this true people. How did the, uh, uh, Paul say in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, he said, uh, let, let's, let's turn over, hold your place in Kings. I want to read another scripture here, but turn over to Hebrews 12 right quick. And the 22nd verse says, but you are come unto the, unto Mount Zion, the natural Mount Zion was the mountains of, of, of Israel it, and of Jerusalem and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So he's talking about the church, not just the physical geographical location, the heavenly Jerusalem and to the innumerable company of angels. That's talking about the ministry of God to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven and to God, the judge of all and to the spirits of just men, women are included, just men made perfect, just men and women. It's mankind made perfect. That's what was taking place in that early church, that divine order of God that Jesus finally brought into reality. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better than that of Abel. It was the blood of Christ, of course, which really, when it all comes down to it, it's talking about the spirit of life that God was in Christ. Oh, um, that's where the life was, was in the blood. That's why they took blood sacrifices in the Old Testament. Let's go back to that 1 Kings and 8, though, because uh, this, this supplication, number one, supplication is earnestly and humbly requesting help and or assistance 
for a need of that someone has, or it could be your 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 supplication is for someone else, the intercessory prayer. God knows we need intercessors that prays for us when we're not hardly able to pray for ourselves. Sometimes I tell people that are very sick, I tell them, look, rest. Just rest right now and let us pray for you. You're not in a condition that you can, you know, maybe muster the strength to even think of your needs, uh, of what you're trying to reach out and say to God if you're in too, too bad a help. Let others intercede for you. So our supplication could be for our own favor from God or for the needs that we realize we're in need that we can't supply for ourselves. We have a brother or sister in need that they can't supply for themselves, whether it be sickness, financial, or just any natural need, problems, situations in life, relationships, whatever. Our supplication is request. It's a request from God for help. The Bible says he is our present help in the time of need. Yes. And so uh, let me let me go back now to Kings. I, I want to read just a little bit more in the 38th verse of Kings, 1 Kings 8, continuing on with what uh, Solomon said, he said, what prayer and supplications soever be made by any man or by any, by all thy people, Israel, which shall know every, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands towards this house. See, he was talking about that, that literal temple, but think about it. Did you realize you, you need church? You need the body of Christ. You need brothers and sisters. You need a ministry that God has touched. You know what? God has gave them a gift for you and I. The ministry is, for, is to serve his people. And the gift, the fivefold gift of the ministry, apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors and evangelists, those are spiritual gifts that work for the benefit of the saints to, to cause faith by an anointing of God's spirit touching you when the word of God, the true word of anointed word of God touches your ears and your mind. Verse 39 says, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of man. Amen. That they may fear thee all thy days, that they may live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people, Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy namesake. I'm glad this is in there because I'm not of Israel. I'm a Gentile. For they shall hear thy great name, of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house. See, when, when you recognize who God is, who God's ministry is, the order of God, the setup of God's family, his kingdom, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to hear, to fear thee, and do thy people as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house, which I have built it, is called by thy name. Praise God. So <clears throat> thank God for these modes and categories of prayer. I'm just trying to, to break it down to help you understand when you're going before God, you need 
Number one, you need contrition. You need that humility. You need to recognize your loneliness and your need for God. And then in your supplications, whatever your need is, whatever your brother's need is. See, sometimes I don't think we recognize the need of our brothers as much as we do for ourselves. And the Bible says it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And so I think it's a, a great thing to realize in supplication before God, letting him know what our needs are, what our brother's needs are, what our nation needs are. God knows right now our nation is in need of, of uh, intercessory prayer from the saints of God our leaders, our medical uh, staff, our medical doctors and medical science needs our prayers. I believe that we could get God. I don't think we've sinned so that God's not gonna hear. If those of us that will humble ourselves and, sup and in supplication call upon God and we could reach God for this nation, for the problem that's in this world. God still has a great, great, great work to do to make up the remainder of his bride and to reach this world. Whosoever will, let him come. Now let me tell you something. They're not gonna come if, if there's no one bidding them to come. That's why Jesus called out 12 men do you remember that? Andrew, Peter, Andrew's brother, the two sons of Zebedee, Zebedee, James and John, and then Philip and Simon the Zealot, and who was uh, Thomas and Bartholomew, and then James, the son of Alphaeus, his brother Jude was called in one place, Judas, not Iscariot. He was also called Thaddeus. And then, uh, help me here, I'm leaving one out. Of course, Matthias replaced Judas Iscariot. Uh, Thomas, I left out Thomas. That's your 12 apostles. Remember, he called them and he, he called those men to serve his people. And those men were uh, God's, to fulfill God's purpose for you and I. We need to recognize our need for that. We need help. We need to recognize our now. That's what our supplication and prayer is for, is to seek God for favor. Not for, you know, I've often said, he is not a cosmic Santa Claus just to call for anything. You know, just whatever my want is. God's not, he, he wants to give you good things and even blessings, but not, he doesn't want to put that up above you getting in a state of order with him and recognizing him as your savior and as your instructor and as your guide and that you develop righteousness not th through being spoiled by just giving things, not learning responsibility. All of us. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, America don't need God. God bless this nation so greatly that people, it's hard to get people to serve him because they don't feel like they need God. They can, you know, you can, we got people, homeless people on the street standing on the corners, probably making more money than some people that's got a college degree just standing there for handouts. How much money do they get in a day? This, this country, God has blessed it immensely. But oh, how great we need God. There's nothing that will satisfy the soul. Only Jesus, that song says, can satisfy the soul. You can get things, all the kind of things you want to get, but your soul will be hungry. You know why? Because it's longing for that connection with that, with its creator. 
God created us with something in us recognizing that we had a creator and we need that creator to help us to find his purpose. You can search this world over, but you'll never find satisfaction until you find the Lord, the song says. So, uh, Psalms 103, I don't know if I'm going to have, I don't know if I have enough time. I hope I can. Let's go to Psalms 103. Right, two. I just want to read this scripture. It's, a, it's Psalms 103. Uh, well, it's right in the very beginning of it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. See, there's such benefits in serving God. I, I, that takes us right into the, to the next uh, category, which is thankfulness. I do want to read Philippians right quick before I go to... Philippians 4 and 6. It says, be careful for nothing. You know what that means? That means, you know, little bitty things. You know, don't, don't just, you know, it's the little foxes, foxes that spoil the vines. Brother Clyde Patton said one time, people used to ask him, what is it that you've done that caused you to be such, so successful in the ministry? His answer was, I haven't ever done any great thing. It was just the little things. I didn't forget. I forgot, to, I, I remembered to do the little things. Be careful for nothing, for the little things. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds and your minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things be true, whatsoever things be honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, of a good report, and if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So, you know, our supplication, we, we, we have to not only recognize our need for him, but we have to call out on him in our times of need. We do a lot of prayer and supplication, but this contrition, don't forget the contrition. And then thankfulness. You know, Brother Linger took that little song, said, uh, praise him in the morning, praise him at noontime, praise him when the sun goes down. How did he say it? Praise him in the morning. He said, uh, uh, somebody help me with that. What? Uh, uh, praise him in the morning. Uh, how does it go? Am I slipping my mind? Thank him at, at, at noontime and uh, be thankful when the sun goes down. No, I'm leaving out one there. Somebody from the church, give me that right quick. It just come to my mind. Uh, thankfulness. Recognizing the benefits. You know, I read you 103rd Psalm there. Recognizing the benefits from the Lord. Both, both naturally and spiritually. Uh, it's uh, uh, yeah. Praise him in the morning. Thank him in the in noon time and give him glory. Is it give him glory when the sun goes down? That may be it. 
Um, anyway, uh, this, for us to have thankfulness to the Lord. Let me read you a scripture in Ephesians. Uh, the first the first chapter of Ephesians. I think sometimes you just need to remember what all God's done for you and be thankful. Thankful, number one, that he's, he, he caused you even to see your need for him and have a relationship with him and develop the righteousness that's in God that was in his purpose for, for his creatures. One, uh, the 16th verse in Ephesians 1 says, Cease not to give thanks uh, for you making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope and calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he hath wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every uh, name that is named and only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and to put all things under his feet and give him praise. I mean, give give him, uh, him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all things. Of course, he goes on just tell us what God has done for us through Christ what he's brought us to, but then just the natural things. I mean, once in a while, you're to just slow down, recognize how great God is. I, even in all your sorrows, all your trials, all your testings, all your temptations, God's going to deliver you if you'll just look to him. And then when you think of what he has done that's brought you this far, like that old song said, if come too far to turn back now. We're serving such a great God. If you'll serve him. And if you'll recognize his greatness to you and his blessings to you. What praise and what glory. What thankfulness we ought to have for all that he has done. Amen. Then the other category of prayer is, of course, adoration. Praise. He deserves our praise. Not because, you know, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of Israel. He, he's not talking, it's not talking about God just loves to sit up on the throne, look down and say, come on now, everybody praise me. Everybody say hallelujah. Everybody say glory to God. Everybody lift up my name, call my name. We're not serving a God that, that has an ego that needs to be fed. Here it is. Praise him in the morning, thank him at noontime, and rejoice when the sun goes down. Thank you, Brother Fisher. I couldn't think of that all together. Say it again. Praise him in the morning, thank him at noontime, and rejoice when the sun goes down. That's the way Brother Linegar taught us to sing it, you know. And uh, we, we changed those little songs uh, up to help us. He gave us several little things. One of the things he taught this body that everybody didn't get it was on pride. He said, don't ever use the word pride. Pride's, pride, it's selfishness. It feeds the ego. It's all about self. God resists the proud. He said, change that word to thankfulness. Let me tell you something. Ever since Brother Linger taught that, I've never been able to say I was proud for nothing. I may have been proud, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it. I'm trying to get that spirit of selfishness out of me. I want to be thankful. I want to be thankful. 
I don't want to be proud. Don't say I'm proud of my children. Say I'm thankful for my children. I'm thankful for what they've learned. I'm thankful for what they accomplished. I'm thankful they have the talent they have. Don't be proud that you can take any glory. It all came from God. Remember what Paul said, what do you have that you didn't receive? Yes, we're serving a marvelous God. He's worthy, he's worthy of our praise. That, that scripture in Ephesians 1, and four, let me read that. Is that where it is? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that which we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. My Lord, what a great God. What a God that's to be praised. Uh, he's worthy of our praise. The song says he's worthy of all the praise that man can give him. Uh, 116th Psalm. Maybe I'll close with that. Anyway, I'm, I'm just, I just have a thankfulness in my heart tonight. I just wanted to kind of break down these four categories again of the four categories of, of uh, prayer, contrition, supplication, thankfulness, and adoration or praise. 116th Psalm. Um, Verse, uh, okay, verse 12 says, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I'll take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I'll pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all of his people. See, I mean, I want to be a part of the family of God. I want to pay my vows I want, to, I want to live the righteous life with the righteous people of God. That's a praise to God, whether you realize it or not. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. See, God, a saint, by the way, you know, let me, let me give you, uh, let me see if I can remember uh, some synonyms for you of a saint. Number one, it means to be holy. Number two, a saint is one. Here's seven words that are synonymous. Saint, holy, just, upright, righteous, faithful, and wise. See, uh, God, he loves his saints. He loves those that are holy. He loves those that are righteous. And their death is precious to him because they found him. They found his purpose. They found his, his, his holy purpose, his eternal purpose through life. When a saint are wise, are faithful, are just, are upright, are righteous, Holy, saint of God dies. That's precious to God because they're going to be a part of his everlasting kingdom. No wonder it's precious to him. Hallelujah. So uh, I'll read, O oh Lord, true, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bond. See, I was, I was bound in sin, but God loosed me. I'll offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. 
and will call upon the name of the Lord. And I'll pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise the Lord. He's worthy, saints, of our praise. John saw those four beasts around the throne, which just is symbolic of the encampment of God in the end of the Gentile world and the restored church. And he heard the saints those four beasts around the throne crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, for thou art worthy of glory and praise and power forever. Hallelujah, recognizing his greatness and what they were headed into from that restored church right on to life everlasting. Praise God. Well, I feel good tonight. I'm thankful for the Lord that we're serving. I'm thankful for his blessings and his benefits. We still have many needs. Pray for Brother Shelby Weaver. I'm not sure he's gonna pull out of this. Uh, his need is great. And he's on the ventilator in the hospital. And, and uh, it looks like that if God doesn't touch him, we're going to lose him. And so let's pray. Let's keep praying for Brother Shelby Weaver. Remember Brother Ken Jacobian. <clears throat> he's also on the ventilator. Also, Brother Ron Garner's wife. I believe her name's Diana. I'm not positive, but I think I'm right about that. <clears throat> She was in the hospital. Uh, aren't the doctors having uh, surgery on her hand? And she coded, and they were able to bring her back, but they had to put her in intensive care. And let's pray for her and her family, her children. She, you know, she didn't think it was a big deal, but I guess if you're going to have to code, that's a way to do it, or a place to do it. It's in the hospital. But anyway, let's pray for her and Brother Dave's in the assembly there and, and Godfrey. Pray for Brother John Budd. You know, he lost his wife in January and he's he's going through that grieving process and I'm sure he'd appreciate our prayers. Our Brother Fide in Guatemala, it's good to have you with us. Um, Sister Cindy, Michael, my son and his wife, Cindy Smith, her mother, Sister Angie, uh, she's in her 80s and her heart, she's, she's very bad. And uh, so pray for her. Uh, she's, she needs to be on a fibrillator fibula, and uh, she's just not doing well at all. Let's pray for her and her children. The family there is trying to figure out how to help her the best way. Well, keep her in your prayers. Brother Ron Johnson's wife, uh, Sister Beth is still fighting uh, the cancer uh, that she's been fighting for years. She's going to MD Anderson, I think, this week for more tests. And she just has to, you know, we got they've been able to, to preserve her and, and arrest this cancer, but then it keeps coming back. Pray for her. Pray for Brother Gary Wright, uh, his, his bout with cancer. He still needs our prayers. Oh, Sister Bella... Feely, little Bella, I think she's nine or 10 years old. She's about having a bout with cancer. So keep praying for her if you would. So many needs. We need to maintain our supplication for these needs and uh, asking God for his help, his favor in these areas that we're not able to, to meet the needs that we know we have a God in heaven that's able to help us. Uh, with these situations. 
God bless your hearts. Remember our needs. Uh, pray for Guatemala, Brother Fide. Uh, there's a pastor over there that has been following us. And, and uh, pray for the Dominican Republic. Uh, we lost a brother over there, Brother Rudy's. One of his main men was killed on a motorcycle accident last week. They had to bury him. So if you would, pray for Brother Rudy in that church in, Igu in Igue. Pray for all the needs there in the Dominican Republic, many of them. Brother Calderon, I talked to him this week. He told me he had saints in his church that just didn't have any food. I sent him an offering trying to help. We just There's just not enough money, Harley. I just, I just want to stop a moment and thank, thank all of you who have, sent us missionary offerings, especially during this time, to help those people over in the Dominican Republic and all over the world, the other missionary leaders that are helping people in different countries. Also, I want to remind you, Brother uh, Preval in Haiti passed away a couple of days ago. And remember his family, his churches, his children, and the work there in Haiti had many churches, many needs there. I was thinking last night, so many churches there with younger men that are having to have the baton passed to them, the torch. And many of them need your prayers. They're a greater load is falling upon them. So remember that, uh, those needs. God bless your hearts. I love all of you. Well, I get to talking to y'all. It's like I'm talking to a congregation. I'm getting used to this. I almost hate to, to, to almost hate to quit talking. But my hour's about up, and I'd talk longer if God was inspiring me. But I feel like that I've, I've said enough here tonight. I love all of you. Pray for me, and I'll pray for you. And you saints that are here in Little Rock. I need you. We need each other. Let's let's be faithful to church. Let's let's meet Sunday. And let's ask God before we get there to let us sup with him. Let us feel his rich spirit, his goodness and his greatness to us. In Jesus name we pray. God bless your hearts. Love you all. <laughs>